Welcome to the Empower Sportsnet channel. I am your host, Chris Arzola. Tonight, I got a very special guest on with me. Not only is he one of my best friends, but he also happens to be my younger brother from Kentucky Christian University, Isaac Ramirez. What's happening, y'all? Thank you for letting me be on the show. Shout out to everyone that's supporting Sportsnet and everything about it. Appreciate you guys for following us. Of Let's course, thank you. I appreciate you coming on, brother. And, you know, uh, it's nice having you on and stuff. And, um, you know, let's get right into it. So um, tonight we're actually going to start a new segment. Um, it's going to be called the Empower Moment. And so what that's going to be is, is going to be I want to hear a story from you as far as um, either someone you've e either empowered in your life and or someone that has empowered you um, along the way. If you can uh, give us a story, something along, you know, along those lines. Well, my empower moment is uh, me coaching seven and eight year olds flag football, like really inspiring them to be a football player. You know, I was yeah. running, I would run with them sometimes, you know, and just do all the stretches with them and just teaching them how to do the little basics. And uh, it's pretty fun because like they're barely learning, you know, they're just doing cartwheels and stuff. And it's crazy. <laughs> like it was fun, though. It was, not, it was nice because we really got the business and stuff. They really locked in. And it really helped yeah. me. It helped me really just get the flow of things with the um, coaching and stuff. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, you know, it's, it's nice to give back to younger kids like that and give back to the community, especially when they're, you know, starting off so young, you know. So um, that's a nice, empowering moment. Thank you for sharing with us. Um, so obviously, you know, a lot of people don't know, but we grew up in Tulare, California, right? Um, a lot of people are probably like, wow, Tulare, California, where's that at, right? Um, so if you don't mind telling us a little bit more about Tulare, uh, please describe it in your in your words. Uh, Tulare, California. We're from 45 minutes from Fresno. We're surrounded by a million acres of farmland. It hosts the biggest farm show in um, in the world, yeah. and uh, it's pretty pretty fun. Like a lot of competition. We ho host like the Bell Game. Crazy. Like, most fans at the game. You know, it's the last game of the season. Everyone yeah. right before the playoffs, and it, it's a league game, so it's a big deal. Yeah, no, that's awesome. Um, you know, you you described Tulare, you know, as a as an agricultural place, and that's for sure. You know, you know, we grew up in a big agricultural land. Um, you know, not a ton to do there, right? You know, you really got to focus in on academics. You know, on on sports, or you know, find an extracurricular activity to kind of do. And um, you know, what was your what was your go to? You know, as far as kind of um, finding extracurricular activities. You know, while you were growing up in Tulare. When I was growing up, I went to the gym a lot. I try to stay focused on uh, going, playing football, and I would just be anything to do. I would just get some friends together. We would throw the ball extra weekends before when it wasn't season. We'll go play. Yeah. We'll go play football. That's it. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's it's funny because growing up, you know, you you did play a little bit of baseball, right? You played a little bit of basketball growing up, but I can remember at like a young age, you know, you're your focus was really football, you know, at a young age. So, you know, take me back to your childhood and when, when did that start for you? When did you, you know, begin having that passion, that love for football, um, like the way you do? I'll say it was uh, whenever I was playing flag football and they told me uh, to play tackle football instead because <laughs> I really was really just tackling the whole time. Oh, and uh, so once I got into tackle football, I was peewees. You know, they called me Big Happy nickname and uh, <laughs> got some family friends that coached and uh, made some friends really close. And uh, we we're just chilling, you know. Yeah. And it was really dope. That's cool. That's cool. So uh, what age did you start playing at? I started playing at seven, seven, seven years old. Flag football. Yeah, flag football first. And then eight years old was tackle football. Tackle football. Okay, got it. Yeah, see, so when I grew up in Tulare, tackle football didn't start till 10. So I think, you know, obviously um, they start at a younger age now. Um, so that's, that's yeah, I mean, I remember you actually starting that really early. So um, so funny thing is that you went to Tulare Union, right? I went to Tulare Western. We are rivals, you know what I mean? We are rivals, like you said. Like, you know, we have a bowel game at the end of the year, right? That kind of settles, you know, um, settles things as far as like, you know, who has bragging rights as far as, you know, the west side of town, the east side of town, you know, so um, you went to Tulare Union. I don't know much about Tulare Union. I didn't go there. 
you know, tell me more about Tulare Union and what it was like playing for um, Coach Darren Bennett. Tulare Union is uh, football based. You know, we're always trying to get the best out of everything. And uh, usually we have the belt, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, oh, wow. but, uh, <laughs> you know, like it's always a good, it's good to play for them because uh, they always had a lot of players in the NFL, like such as Bryce Harris, Marquise Wilson, Virgil yeah. Green, Zach Dowles growing up. And, uh, yeah. It's crazy because, you know, Super Bowl 50, we had a parade and uh, Virgil Green came back home with the Super Bowl ring. You know, everyone yeah. had a parade right there. And uh, it's a live performance. Uh, our band is just playing the song. You know, everyone's just going crazy. Yeah. And that's it's a big thing to be a part of because, you know, you just don't get those moments all the time. And uh, playing for Coach Bennett, he has like the most people in the NFL, I think, uh, from California as a mm-hmm. head coach. And that's really dope to know because you get to be in the weight room the same weight room as those guys growing up and understanding like you can be you're there in your shoes at one point you know like you can choose where you want to be if you stay dedicated and just work hard and stuff and get where Absolutely. you want to be yeah you know and like you said dedication you know i actually grew up with a couple of those guys and from what i remember they went to Taylor union but i mean um you know we crossed paths and stuff with different sports and like you said um those guys always work you know always work and stuff and um, so their union, like you said, um, always working, you know, always football, uh, you know, pretty, pretty good football powerhouse from, I remember all the way from the early nineties from, you know, Dominic Dorsey, um, you know, to, um, like I said, Zach Dials and those guys. And, and then, you know, all the way from when I was in school, Bryce, you know, Marquise and, and, and all them. So, um, but yeah, that's, that's, um, you know, that's, that's, that's awesome, but let's transition to now. Right. So what grade are you in currently right now? Right now, I'm a senior in college. Senior in college, man. So excited to graduate. I'm assuming you're graduating next next year, right? 2021. Yeah, yeah I'm excited to graduate May 2021. You know okay. what I'm saying? Cool. That's awesome, man. So did you go straight from Kentucky University, Isaac? Or did, did you, you know, right out of high school, did you go straight to Kentucky University, being that this is your senior year? Or did, was there another path before that? Um, actually, I took the JUCO route, junior college. Uh, my junior college was College of the Sequoias, COS. Uh, okay. My freshman year, I started out there, and uh, I was playing with some D1 guys. You know, all the whole line went D1, and I'm an O-lineman. And yeah. uh, so I was trying to go in there. You know, I was getting looks and stuff, but I had a torn meniscus before the season, even knew, mm-hmm. like, I didn't even know. And, mm-hmm. I, like, I was just walking on the beach one day, and I felt it, and uh, I kept playing on it. And um, I didn't get into, like, the doctor until, like, like I actually went heads up with the linebacker last play, yeah. Last play of the practice, and boom, we went heads up. We just stalemated, and my my knee popped, and I was just like, "Ooh, uh, you know, I, I it was completely torn at then." And they got me to a doctor. I had a torn meniscus, and I was just like, "All right, I'm just gonna get the surgery and just focus on the next year." And uh, yeah. doing that, I was stayed in the gym. I was just working in the spring. I was the only old lineman returning, so. I was, it was just me by myself. Uh, I was just working, you know, like doing board drills, which is uh, fundamentals and stuff, and mm-hmm. uh, really getting focused on uh, my sophomore year, which actually happened to be uh, I had got Offensive Player of the Year and uh, oh. Offensive MVP, which yeah. is not really common for an O-lineman. My coach, he – he was excited because he, at, whenever he was telling the high school students, he, he was like, yeah, like it's not really common for an O-lineman to do that. And he was saying, look at him for like his size. You know, he's not really like, you know what I'm saying? Looking like he can do all the positions, but I was very versatile yeah. and I was able to do uh, play left tackle to right tackle all the way to center. Wow. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's crazy being, you know, versatile all the way through, you know what I mean? You don't find people, you don't find linemen that can play tackle and guard, right? You know what I mean? So that's like, that's, that's tough to find. So the, be, the fact that you can find both and be versatile, like the way you are, um, that's outstanding, you know, and I've always told you from day one, since you were young, you know, you've always stood out as far as other people, as far as putting in work, you know, and, and kind of standing above the rest. You know, I, I, I keep telling you, I still, I'm still trying to find someone that I physically see that works harder than you, because like, you know, I, I see all the little things that you do, you know, outside of all the stuff that you already do, you know, all the stuff that people don't see, you know, I do see it and stuff. And so 
Um, you know, I, I, I know the reason why you got that offensive MVP. I know why, you know, I know why you got that because of all the work that you put in um, before that. So um, thank you for sharing your story about, you know, College of the Sequoias and stuff, because, um, you know, that's a that's that's a big part of it, you know, to do with where you are now, you know, the step that you took beforehand. So um, what's it like going from California to Kentucky then, you know, and now playing football over there? Yeah, I'll say it's uh, more laid back, like it's not really the city, you know, so it's it's pretty crazy because you're surrounded by trees mostly and it's mm -hmm. a small town. It's only 2000 people. Like, oh, wow. Yeah. So <laughs> we make up like 800 of that. So, you know, wow. it's pretty crazy. And it's it's actually nice, though, because people are nice. They know you. It's local. Mm -hmm. Like, so you just really get the vibe of like more family oriented to school, you know, like it's pretty crazy, absolutely. but it's nice. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, and, and you make a good point because I went to smaller schools too. And, and I like that feeling, you know, I like that feeling, like what you're saying. Um, you know, I had a lot of friends that went to huge schools and I just didn't think they were kind of for me type thing. And, and um, you know, the smaller schools definitely fit what I, I look for, you know, the family vibe and, um, getting to know people, making relationships, um, you know, and there's a lot of people to this day still that from college that I still have relationships with, you know, so um, continue to build those relationships while you're there, you know, um, make as many friends as possible. And like I said, just just keep, um, you know, keep growing in the process. So uh, without giving too much information, what is Kentucky Christian University of team for 2021 going to look like without giving too much information, obviously, to, um, you know, uh, you know, your uh, opposing teams and stuff. I'll say we're looking dangerous. Nah, I'm playing. But, <laughs> well, we'll see. You know what I'm saying? And uh, just get ready for it because we're coming, you know. We're all putting in that work in. Mm -hmm. We actually get a extra semester to let the younger guys get the playbook so they understand, you know, they're ready to go. And uh, we're just getting stronger as we go because we have this extra semester to work on. It's usually, like, this will be our season, but uh, it's moved to the yeah. spring. So okay. it's just a great opportunity because now we're having different battles for positions and stuff. So mm -hmm. it's definitely an honor to be a part of this program. Got it. So when do you, when's your guys' um, season start now that you guys are postponing? Uh, it's going to start in February of spring 2021. February 2021. Got it. Okay. Okay. And so, you know, you, you make a good point as far as, you know, bringing in, right, you're bringing in freshmen. Like you said, normally how it goes, you bring in freshmen in August, right? Uh, you have spring ball, September, or not spring ball, but, you know, winter ball typing, getting ready for season, and then, boom, you get right into season. So they don't have that much time to kind of come in, learn that playbook, right? Now you have an extra semester to kind of come in, learn this playbook. But what is it like, though, for your, your posting you know, opposing teams, you know, do you feel like they're going to be gaining this advantage on or not advantage, but this feeling exactly too? you know, that, yeah. Hey, our young guys are coming in and, and, you know, we're learning this playbook. You think they're getting that, that advantage as well? Uh, I would say, yeah, they are because, uh, but we have a different opportunity because we're in pads. We're full go right now. We're just learning the playbook, play by play, running the plays. They're lucky to even get a seven on seven right now. So we're just thankful for the opportunity got to be grateful for every day that we get out there absolutely yeah and is it because you guys are a smaller school is that is that why or is that is that why you guys are um able to kind of get more into paths and kind of do things a more a little more in depth in other in other programs yeah we take <clears> care <throat> of uh surveys every day we have to check off a survey we have to wear a mask so i got mine right here you know fly yeah. legends and uh you know we just really take care of each other with temperature checks every day and we just got to really take care of each other if someone feels not too good then they just sit out for practice or something yeah you got to let somebody know yeah no absolutely i mean that's important especially right now during this time you know you um it's important to take care of others you know and um especially as a team right you know you guys don't want no one to get sick so um you know continue guys to do the right thing and and you know you guys will all be ready for you know when the season comes you know february 2021 but also want to transition to mental mental health and, 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 and mental stuff because you know growing up um, you know I could remember this like it was yesterday you know eighth grade I remember you you know you had a, a really severe injury you know um, you know you, you you broke your fibula and your tibula at the same time and it was 
uh, it was like one of the worst things ever. Like I, I just hated seeing you in that way, you know, and then, you know, you talked about, you know, tearing your meniscus and I know you tore your other meniscus too. Right. Yeah. So, and then I know you've had other several injuries. So, you know, my question is mentally, you know, how do you overcome these injuries and then continue to, to, you know, to continue to do what you're doing, you know, you continue to go full board, um, you know, no stopping, you know, how, how do you mentally get over these injuries? Mentally, you just got to be strong as you can, like um, mental focus, like mental toughness was a big thing. My eighth grade year, like yeah. our coaches were our high school coaches. So they were instilling us like you got to be mental tough. Like if it hurts, you got to keep going. Like and like they're talking about like conditioning wise and stuff like that. You got to know what pain yeah. to like that you can keep going. And yeah. so my eighth grade year, I was trying to get back. Even with the broken leg, we're about to go to playoffs, championship. You know, I already knew because that year, the eighth grade year, we would just do that. Like, that, yeah. was, just, that was just the thing we did. And so you just got to be ready to go. Like, my junior year happened. I uh, was getting an extra rep, power clean. I extended and mm-hmm. pop. There goes my meniscus. And uh, it hurt. It hurt really bad. And I was walking on it and stuff. And I couldn't do the drills like a figure eight. Boom, we're training for spring and I'm re- getting ready and we're trying yeah. to go. We're, usually we go to the beach and we have competitions and uh, we couldn't actually do it. I couldn't do it my senior year. So I had to really change the way I approached the game because I had to get ready in my own way, not normally how I was normally used to with the whole team. I was with yeah. the team at practice. I would do, I'd be doing core and stuff, getting right with the trainer she would be just letting me know what exercise i could do to help me get mm-hmm. better and stronger and um i actually didn't even play in any practices before my senior year um uh, leading up to game one wednesday i got cleared we play on fridays thursday yeah. was a walkthrough game one it comes and that's my first day of pads and uh <laughs> we just go out there and we take the dub wow so you just walk right in and just just handle business so yeah. You know, <clears throat> excuse me. And, you know, and that's what I'm talking about right there. You know, mentally, how do you overcome things and stuff? And so, um, you're right. You know, you do got to be ready. Um, you know, you do uh, have to have that confidence in yourself. You know, and and you do have that confidence in yourself. And you know, and I know why. You know, I I see. You know, everything that you had and everything you've done. You know, you worked for. You know, you worked for. So it's good to have that confidence. And and like you said, um, you know, I watched you at a young age grow fast. You know, mentally and and um you know, obviously physically too, but, you know, you really always, always took the time to, to really make sure that um, mentally you were focused and mentally you were there and you were prepared, you know, you were always more prepared than a lot of people and stuff. And, and you put in all that little extra work and, um, you know, and, and that's why I wanted to know what mentally, you know, how you personally overcame these injuries. You know, a lot of people would just kind of stop playing after a lot of these injuries, you know? Um, and so the fact that you, uh, endured them, endured them at a very young age, and then continued on um, to what you're doing is, you know, you don't find a lot of people that that can mentally handle that. So, um, speaking of kind of mentally handling that, describe 2020. 2020, it, it's a pretty wild year, you know, losing Kobe, but um, so that gives yeah. you like another mentality that you got to get the Kobe mentality. You know, like you got to push strong, you got to you know, surround yourself with family because we're all home, you know, you get to really spend time with family. You got time mm-hmm. on your hands. Mentally, you get to find out who you are because just in case you got laid off or like, you know, you just d- got to l- make your own business, you know, teach yourself, learn things that you haven't learned. Like um, just learning from school was a different experience. Learning at school, school at home, you know, like just learning yeah. online. And um, it's really really crazy because you gotta it was just a wild year but it's a good opportunity to find out who you are yeah i mean i agree and and um you know that's you're you're taking the right approach because you know it's it's tough you know it's tough a lot of people are going through a lot of different things um you know i'm I'm, you know we got to be very grateful that you know we're in a situation that um you know you're able to still go back to school and everything like that and uh, Cause I remember when you were at home, obviously doing your studies, you know, I kept asking you, are you, when are you going back to school? Right. You, you know, when you're going back to school and then you finally have the day that you're going back to school. So it's a blessing that, you know, that you're back now and stuff and you're able to finish your studies there. Um, you know, when a lot of people are not able to do that right now. So, 
um, you know, I'm, I'm sure you're really grateful to be back on campus and, and doing everything that you're doing right now. So, um, but, you know, describe to us your playing style. Like, are you more of aggressive playing player? You know, are you, um, you know, more mental, more physical? What are you, what are you doing out there on the field? What, what's your playing style? My playing style is uh, smart and I'm a technician. Really, uh, my technique is really uh, what I rely on whenever I'm trying to beat somebody because whenever, if any, if it goes down, I'm faster off the ball or like my first two steps, like those are what like depend on like my position, which yeah. is O-line. And uh, just to get out there, understand my reads and stuff, who I'm blocking, who's blitzing, like you got to be able to read the opponent, you know what I'm saying? Like or you got like their footwork, how they're lined up just understand everything like understand which step he's going to take what step you're going to take while you still know the snap count and mm -hmm. the play you got wow, so just a total mental game then total mental game yeah so mental game and i mean i'm i'm sure you're talking about angles and stuff like that right yeah sir yeah and so i mean you know and that's that's how it was i mean you you're always considered a uh, smaller lineman right you know but i mean to me you're always better than a lot of them and you know and hey that's the secret right you know it's it's being mentally prepared more than other people you physically have you know you physically have the attributes to do it but mentally are you capable of doing it right right yeah i'll say i just position myself in in ways to get to where i need to be got it smart you know smart you're definitely taking a different approach than some people when they're just using physical approach right Yes, sir. Yeah. So do you plan on pursuing football, you know, after this year, you know, being that it's your senior year, you know, you're going to be graduating May 2021 with a business degree. Congratulations. You know, it's coming up, you know, almost there. Keep working yeah. hard. I'm so proud of you, you know. So but do you, you know, do you plan on, on pursuing football outside of outside of just college? I'm going to keep uh, working hard, stay in the weight room, trying to gain weight. If I do choose to, because like I know I can in a way, you know, like even if it's just a practice squad or even if it's a XFL, Canadian football, yeah. whatever it is, I like this is just what I love to do, you know. So I gotta really, if I want to do it, then I gotta work for that, you know. I gotta gain weight, but in healthy weight, get stronger, and just do whatever I can to be at the next level. Yeah, um, you know, and that's that's the road and that's the process that a lot of people um you know don't get to enjoy uh but you know you you like that stuff you know what i mean you you feed off of that and so um you know take that approach into pursuing you know the next the next things whether it's football or um outside of football you know continue that approach continue that hunger uh, to strive for other things you know uh, because trust me i, I want to see you continue to play football not even a doubt but you always got to remember and i know you know you know you got to have secondary things you know secondary things secondary thoughts um you know so and that actually leads me to um you know my next question with you as far as you know what what do you see as far as being a, a five-year plan from from 2021 graduation to 2026 i'll say by the end of 2021 i'm trying to have at least my debt paid off whatever money i owe paid off already so I can start focusing on just stacking paper and getting to 2022 where I could own a property. I want to own a property by 2025 and yeah. just really just starting my own business, whether it's uh, sales in uh, like just brand, my own brand, you know, and uh, yeah. I'm just trying to build off of that. Sponsoring myself uh, while I try to help others uh, get to where they want to be in life such as uh if they want i could coach them or i could just uh teach them little uh exercises that i know because i went through the process yeah yeah of course so you know being being that and 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 juggling everything together right now you're you're at school you know you have class you have uh football how do you juggle all that on a daily basis you know i mean what are you doing every day not only to better yourself, but what are you doing every day that's keeping you on track? Right when you wake up, you got to formulate a plan, you know, like you just got to 
put together what you're going to do, when you're going to do it. Like right when I wake up, I'm just like, all right, I have this today. So I'm going to get this done at this time. By that time, I get my next things that I have to do done. And uh, such as like getting my homework done from eight to like two and then two to three. I'm in the yeah. training room, practice 345. Whether whether I have training room or weight room, I switch those. And then uh, at night, just in the library, if I have extra work or and then got to eat and then push ups or whatever you got to do to help you get to or core just to get you to uh, that extra work, you know? Yeah. So that's like a, uh, that's an everyday process for you. Basically that's what your, your normal day looks like as a college athlete. Yes, sir. Wow. Yeah. You know, there's, there's, there's a lot that goes into it. You know, there, there is a lot that goes into it that a lot of people um, don't see behind the scenes. And so, um, you know, continue to do that, continue to grind. But, you know, this, this, I just kind of want to start finishing up with you, kind of wrapping up and just kind of letting you know that, um, you know, thank you for the interview for coming on. Um, really proud of you, really proud of, of everything you've accomplished thus far. Um, excited to see you graduating in May 20, you know, 2021. Can't wait to see your senior season. Um, you know, uh, I just want to thank you for coming on and, and uh, you know, you know, telling people more about, about you and who you are um, as a college athlete. Yeah, appreciate this, for real. It's an opportunity that's crazy. Like, I wouldn't even expect to be on the show, even if you were the president. You know what I'm saying? Just not even because you don't got me. You, I know you got me, but it's just like it's just a dope opportunity because you get to get a message out there to people that you know. I probably wasn't even thinking about this like two weeks ago. You know, like, and then I, I get a call and I was just watching the show. You know, and then I'm see everyone on it. You know, and I just appreciate this opportunity. Yeah, of course, you know, um, you know, we can't wait to, to see you succeed in the future and, um, and continue to work hard. Um, I want to give a special shout out to um, our mom before we go. Um, she's going to be turning 50. I know she's watching right now. Her birthday is on Thursday. Shout out to Tina. Happy birthday, mom. Um, Happy birthday. We love you, you know, and, um, you know, I also just want to make sure before we leave, please go to our website, www.empowerlv.org. OK, um, there you'll take a look and you'll see uh, the teams that we're, we have um, currently um, in different information as far as mental health and our founders. Uh, so if you could please go to www.empowerlv.org. Um, other than that, I just wanted to thank you for coming on again. Uh, thank you for everyone that's watching. And I look forward to getting back on here soon. Have a good night.